Hello friends, thank you for joining me today. This is the very last media demonstration video I'm gonna make for 2021, and it's gonna be the very first art lesson we do in 2022. I am excited to draw this with you friends, and yes, we are drawing another bird. In fact, we're drawing two birds, but the previous bird, the partridge in a pear tree, was a very imaginary and symbolic bird. And these are very real birds. And if you look out your window or for you, if you have a bird feeder, you probably are gonna see a chickadee. You know, they live all over the place. So even if you don't live in North Carolina, you probably have chickadees around. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this. I'm really excited to do this with you guys. And uh, I'm looking forward to 2022 very much and looking forward to drawing with you guys then. So for now, um, let's talk about what we're going to do. So I know, you know, that everybody has probably a huge bin of art supplies. Now, yours might be all mixed together. I hope they're not. Um, but if they're not, that's good. But in this case, maybe there's just a huge giant bin of colored pencils. And you think, well, I don't know which color I want. And it slows you down, right? So what do I tell my students to do all the time? Does anybody know? That's right. I say, choose the colors you want to use first, right? Get them ready and then um, get yourself ready. So for example, I've got some uh, scratch paper here. Some people call it free draw paper, including me, um, but it's really just testing paper. Also, I still have a few magnets left. So guys, if you have not received an art tub magnet yet and you want one, all you got to do is contact me and I will send it to you. Your parents just need to email me, friends. Say, hey, mom. Hey, dad. I really want an art tub magnet so I can hang my artwork up on the refrigerator or a metal door or a washer or a dryer, any metal surface. And um, or a whiteboard, whatever you got will work. Let me know, guys. I really want to send these to you. And I only have a few left. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, friends, so today we're going to be using colored pencils to finish our drawing. This is the drawing called Winter Chickadees, and that's because it is officially winter now, and these are definitely officially chickadees. So this is a drawing that was inspired by a piece of wallpaper. A lot of my students ask me these questions like, where do you get your ideas? And I get them from all over. I have a bird feeder. I look at chickadees every day. Um, and also I have seen them in different places. You might see them in magazines. You might see them on, you know, gift bags. You might see them on um, bird feeder, like, I mean, not bird feeder, but um, you know what I mean? The bird seed bags at the store, There's they're all over the place. In this case, I was really inspired by this piece of, I believe this was a gift bag that I saved years ago. And I when I say years ago, I mean like 2000, 11 or before like over 10 years ago so anyway I've kept it I love it I think it's very pretty and so I'm I'm making an art lesson inspired by that it's not going to be exactly the same and that's because friends we're not making copies here we're making art and it's okay to be inspired by the things around you all right so I got my colored pencils ready I already picked them out as you, as I said you know you don't have to have the entire bin in front of you sometimes it's good to just have the ones you want as you can see I kind of went for the rainbow spectrum here plus I have lots of neutral tans and creams and grays and blacks because well let's take a look at the real thing here lots of tans and grays and a little bit of a uh, yellowish gold in there too so we'll talk about that when the time comes but for now what I want you to think about are your colored pencils. So this one is already sharp enough. And uh, as you see, it's red, which it's always important to test your colors. If you looked at this alone, you might think maybe it's even brown, but you gotta test those colors and that way you know what you're working with. Here's another one. This is also looks red, right? Well, this one actually says orange. And so when you color with it, you're like, oh, wait a minute. This one looks like brown, but it's red. This one looks like red, but it's orange. It's a good thing to know, right? Aren't you glad you tried them out? And I have another orange here, which look, this is, this doesn't seem to make any sense. This one is lighter and it has a darker color on the pencil. So these are the things I'm talking about, guys. You gotta test your colors to know what you got going on. Also, colored pencils, guys. 
If you, first of all, this one has been sharpened on both ends, which is a no-no. You don't want to do that because number one, it should not, you should not have a sharp pointy object facing your eye when you are bending over to color something. I hope that just automatically makes sense. You don't want to stab yourself in any way, shape or form. So this one is not ever going to get sharpened again on this end. I'm only going to sharpen one end. But also, if you don't sharpen it enough, then when you're coloring, you are going to dig into the paper with the wooden parts of this pencil. And that's going to leave grooves and marks on your paper that cannot ever go away. They are gonna be permanent. So you don't want it to be so sharp that the tip breaks and you don't want it to be so dull that you dig into your paper. So like with a lot of things, you want it to be just right, right? So not too sharp, not too dull, and definitely not on both ends, okay guys? I'm serious about that. That's a safety thing. So you see how this one is all the way down to the wood? Well, it looks, well, look, you can still color with it, but what's happening is I'm, this is just scratch paper, so it doesn't matter. I am literally digging into my paper and I'm not doing myself any favors. If you color over it, it those scratches will show. So keep your manual pencil sharpener nearby, right? Hold it the way it's supposed to be held. Sharpen it over a little cup or tray or something. And don't sharpen it so much that it breaks. And don't let it get so dull that it scratches the paper. So guys, I tell my students this all the time and I hope you guys are listening. Those are some very important things about colored pencils. I'm gonna go into time-lapse now. Colored pencil work does take quite a long time. This time-lapse goes really fast, but just remember it's just uh, a video, right? So in real life, it takes time. I want you to take your time. All right, friends, I am going to go into time lapse here in just a second, and um, I'll just see you on the other side. Here we go. Wow, friends, that was a lot of effort and uh, it really should take you some time to get this thing done. A few things I want to point out to you, um, just definitely be mixing and blending your colors. Use that scratch paper to figure out what kind of colors you like one on top of another. For example, I did like a blue uh, on top of a dark green and created sort of this spruce color and I like that. Um, I also added some lighter greens in there, which you know what, you might go back and say, I even want a little bit lighter in there. and. Uh, and that would be okay. 
So you know what, you know what makes green is yellow and blue. So if you wanna add a little bit of yellow here and there in your pine needles, it's just gonna make them really stand out and it's a nice little touch. Uh, as you were watching here, you saw that I added a little yellow here at the end and then I went over it with my purple, the same purple that I did with my blue. And that's because yellow and purple are complementary colors and yellow and purple mixed together makes sort of a tannish brown. And I knew that these birds had sort of a tannish brown chest and I wanted to have a little bit of that purple mixed in. And so I added a little bit here for shading. Um, I added a little bit in the tail. You know what? My purple's gotten pretty short, but that's okay. I can add a little bit more. And that's just gonna help it make it look all like it belongs together. It kind of brings it all together. It doesn't have to be super purple in order for it to look cool. I just want you to know that you can add a little bit of these colors and you can continue to mix and blend a little bit to soften them if they seem too bright or something. So anyway, uh, I am going to just soften the edge of this bird's shoulder a little bit, but those colors are still there and that's what makes it look so nice. Well, guys, I hope you had a wonderful uh, time watching this. I look forward to drawing this with you in 2022. I'm going to get this uh, drawing here ready for the photo, the one you're going to see when you uh, log on to YouTube and check it out. Thanks so much, friends. I love drawing with you. I hope you have a good New Year's Eve, and I will see you in 2022. See you then.